I was listening to this YouTube video called about this fellow who's been doing this research, and he's written a book called Hooked. Right, yes. Mm -hmm. And he, did you happen to, to get a... I watched the video. Oh, did you? Yeah. Because I thought about Starbucks when he talked about the video. He said that a lot of big companies will give you something free and then they take it away. <laughs> well, why? I'm not mad at Starbucks because of that. Oh, you're not? I'm mad at Starbucks because they have this, they have this, like this challenge program or, you know, I can't remember what they call it. But anyway, they give you this offer. They say, come in, you know, four times over the next five days and buy something each day or they might give you a specific list and we'll give you, you know, X number of stars. And so I've been playing along because this is a great way to earn free drinks, right? Yeah. Or free, free things. Right. But, um, but my husband started to play too. And you know how competitive I am. Anyway, no. <laughs> his rewards are so much easier to get than mine. Like I'll, I'll have to, I'll have to go in, I don't know, five times and buy five lattes or buy a protein box. They have a specific list and he'll have to go in twice and he what? gets more points. Well, and it's because it, he doesn't use his card as much. Well, that's what they said on right? this program, right? right? But I don't think that's fair. No, it's not I don't. fair. And I think, you know, when you and I do business mm -hmm. and when we talk to our customers, we do things that are, that are rewarding our loyal people. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I guess, again, I think the more times I go to Starbucks, the better my reward should be, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm obviously kind of, spending my money there. Pe penalize you, right? What was I, well, article? I feel like that. I just, yeah. I feel like that. But the, uh, but it, you know, the fact that Starbucks, they... <laughs> pay attention because this girl's <laughs> competitive. <laughs> They've changed their whole thing now. They're, oh, they're, they? they're going through some, some different changes. But, but despite that, I think, you know, as a business person, we go out there and we are treated as customers mm -hmm. in, in other places. And, um, and we bring that experience back to our own business. Yeah. So I think, I think, you know, Starbucks could learn something from us in that it's it's important to encourage new people to come to your mm -hmm. place of business and to reward people who shop with you all the time absolutely so I think today we have to talk about what we do do because some people may not know right yes yes some of the mm -hmm. some of the um, some of the things that we consciously Often. invest in mm -hmm. in order to give um you know, a reward in a sense, yeah. um, an opportunity to people who might not otherwise get that right. because of where we, because of where we are and who we are. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. But so uh, we'll add that to the list. Okay. Okay. While you do that, I was just going to say, you know, funny story. I went to see, I went to see Mich Michelle Obama. She came and spoke oh, here and right. it was really nice because, um, one of our staff members had a couple of tickets and she gave them to me for free, which I was just so, so lovely. Yes. But when we got in there, speaking of social media and how you, when we got into um, Roger's place. Yes. And that they, was the first time you'd been there, right? That was the first time. Yeah. Yeah. We took the LRT to, right to Roger's place, which was really nice. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, we, you get in there and you get seated and they have this big screen up, of course, because they're going to show you the close up you know, close ups yeah. of Michelle Obama, but they were, um, streaming a Twitter feed in there. So oh. what they wanted you to do was to take a picture of yourself and, you know, hashtag, um, I am becoming, which is her theme mm -hmm. and put it up there. And then you might see yourself on the screen. So I took a picture of Sarah and myself cause we were there and then I went to post it on Twitter. Um, uh, and I, couldn't remember how to log into my Twitter <laughs> account. <laughs> and so I spent several minutes, you know, looking up my password and then guessing at my password because I didn't have it written down anywhere. I don't use Twitter. I, well, I don't either. I, when in fact, I, I kind of, you know this, right? I kind of scorn social media. I mean, who's got time for it? <laughs> mm -hmm. I think you might feel otherwise about wow. that. But uh, anyway, long story short, I, I managed to get our picture up on, on there. Like, a, you know, I hashtagged it and everything. Oh, and you, and you were, put it up. found your account. It found, I, I got into my account. Yeah. And Did you get up on the screen? <laughs> well, we watched. I don't, I don't, I didn't oh. see, I didn't see our picture up on the screen, but you know, it was just, it was a really good way of Did connecting people as they were coming in sure. to the event and having them, you know, kind of the reward was that you do this and you get into this particular feed 
but also you might get up on the big screen. Right. So there really was no prize. It's not like you got a, you know, no. concert tickets for the next <laughs> event at Rogers Place or anything. No. no. But you, the whole thing about getting up on the feed is kind of a, a prize, isn't it? Yeah. Or a contest. For sure. For sure. Works, works really well with competitive people. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, if you didn't have a Twitter, Twitter account, you could just post a photo, you could you could text your photo to... Can you a, put the, a photo of your dog up there? Or? You could put whatever you want. As yeah. long as you put the hashtag up there, then you, you'd get in there. Mm -hmm. It was, And then it was really nice to see all these people. And some people were saying that they had come from Sacramento, California. Oh. And other people, you know, people were saying where they had come from. And somebody had driven six hours. Somebody's dad had driven six hours to come in. And um, I just thought that was really nice. Yeah. So it was something so we'll, we should think about. Yeah, we'll mm -hmm. have to do that for our next event. Maybe when Lucy's here, mm -hmm. everybody could um, Instagram or because I think I think knitter, <laughs> knitters and crocheters use Instagram more than Twitter, don't they? I I think yeah. I, I suppose so. Yeah, I think it's well. Are you asking me? I I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think so. The oh, so last point about this whole event. So it was held at Rogers Place. The place was completely full um there were lots of people there and then they, they put the lights down and all over the place you could see these little these little squares of light because oh. even though they put the lights down everyone was on their phone yeah and there were there were four women sitting in front of me one of whom brought her phone out i, I like i'm i really not exaggerating she had her phone out every five minutes and she was checking something taking a picture texting somebody um, it was distracting to me and I finally just said to myself like you, you can't you can't look down you know I, I could put my purse up a little bit just to kind of block it and and paid attention mm -hmm. to what was going on well we went to a movie last weekend mm -hmm. and they have that whole thing in the movie theater where right. you have to put your phone totally away yeah because it is very distracting, oh, right? Especially in a movie theater because it's completely black in there. Yeah. And so the light from your phone, even if it's on dim, is going to annoy everybody behind you. So did they tell you to turn it off once she spoke? No. Well, no. that's kind of rude, and, too. I mean, again, you know, the idea is there is, is I think, you know, it, I, and I think lots of artists have to deal with this. It's the idea that you're competing with other people's phones. And, um, and this guy that, you know, the guy that did the video... His thing was, you know, uh, that that people go to their phones because they're feeling negative emotions. Yes. They go to Facebook because they're lonely. Mm -hmm. They go to Twitter because they want to see what, you know, they go to social media they, to see what their friends are doing. They to go see to their email. And I know I do this. <laughs> yeah, at dinner. <laughs> you know, all the time. Because, you know, I, I want to catch up. That's my thing. I don't mm -hmm. want to have to... Come to my email and find 45 messages. I know. Barbara and I drove, Barbara and I took this road trip to Sutton, Quebec, and we were, we were driving along, and for, for probably three quarters of that time, Barb was on her phone. And was in, I? Yeah. <laughs> but in my head, I was saying to myself, you know what? It's fine because she's taking care of business. Yes. She's answering emails and she's dealing with those kinds of things. Maybe three quarters is an exaggeration. But we ended up driving past the, the turn off. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but I, it's, it's work-life balance, right? Yeah. And the old way of doing things where, so for me, I'm old-fashioned. I, I turned my phone on silent when I got to this thing. I stuck it in my purse mm -hmm. and I put my purse down. Um, not I on bet the floor, you, but, you, know. you enjoyed it more too, though. Well, I, 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 I focused you, on what she was saying. Yeah. yeah. And I think the people who were on their phones can't, I mean, I, I get multitasking, but I don't think that while you are typing a tweet, you can hear what somebody's saying. It's hard. I, I don't think, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, that's my, that's my little beef for today. <laughs> it's the social media thing. Yeah. It's a, it, the thing I, I blessing find, and a curse. Yeah. I find, though, it's, um, for us in our business, it's such a way of connecting with our customers on a whole different level. Mm -hmm. You know, last month, Joanne Wiggins won our prize. Mm -hmm. she, her, she was one of three. Right. But she was the first one to contact me. And Joanne's been watching our podcast from the very beginning. Right. And, and, and how did she find out that she won a prize? She well, watched the video to the very mm -hmm. end. We put these right at the very, very end. Yeah. 
So if you're watching, you know, don't, you know, give up. Keep going like Joanne did. <laughs> Please zip forward to the end. Or zip forward to the and end. And see if you're one of the three people that we post up at the end. Because we always, we always like to have that little well, Easter egg at the end. And I feel like I know her now. You know what I mean? Because right. Because we've, we've talked. And you ran into Barbara. Yeah, uh, so I went to Canmore uh, a couple of months ago, and I was sitting in Starbucks with my friends, and Barbara Amping from Canmore came up and said hi to me. Yeah. And that was so nice. and made me are. feel so special to be recognized in Canmore. And she said, you know, I'm, I'm Barbara Amping. I won, you know, won the prize because mm-hmm. she won the prize that month. And, um, and I just said, thank you, you know, thank you for, mm-hmm. thank you for watching. Thank you for, um, thank you for coming up and saying hello. It, it, it feels really nice to be in a, another town yeah um and to have somebody recognize you and um, and to know that you say hi that you've got friends kind of right yeah in those yeah. different cities <laughs> i know and then for all the other people who leave comments i mean we make a really concerted effort to reply to every comment mm-hmm. not that there's thousands of them no um no, you do too and um and so you know it, it it's that conversation that this this platform of social media enables mm-hmm. us to have with people who are local and people who are um, continents away. Mm-hmm. So I think that's I think that's really you know that's really fabulous. And I take time out to do that. Mm-hmm. I don't answer comments while I'm at any you know another event. That's you know I think that I think your comments deserve some quiet time to answer them. Nice. <laughs> I wish I had quiet time. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm she watch, she answers things while while her husband watches the hockey game and she pretends that she's watching yes. but she's not really he shoots he scores <laughs> <Woo-hoo>! <laughs> <laughs> all right so we should probably open this up the proper way we should probably right? should yeah. yeah so hello everybody hi um, this is my lovely sister, Barb. Hello. And I'm Cynthia, and we're from River City Yarns, uh, our local yarn shop in Edmonton, Alberta, in Canada. Mm-hmm. And um, we're shooting this podcast a little bit early this mm-hmm. month because our um, our team, half of our team is going to be away mm-hmm. in Japan while, what you know, during our normal shooting schedule. So yeah. um, we may be you know, going back and forth in time and talking about things that are happening in the future. Yeah, <laughs> or that have already happened, but they haven't really happened right, yet. Right, right, right. And so we may be inserting some photos and things yeah. like that to, to help this so, stay timely, but... Stay yeah. with us. We've, we uh, promise that it'll be fun. We've mm-hmm. got lots of new things to show you. Yeah. And let's just jump right let's in. Go, let's go. Let's go. Yeah. Absolutely. Before we do that, though, you have to show everyone the back of your hair. Oh. <laughs> Cynthia got her hair done. Yes. And oh my God, it's so pretty. Okay. You Check this the... out. Turn right around. Can I? Yeah. Can I bump the table? No. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. I got it. So what if I do? What oh, if I do this. You know what I think? No, just put it down. Just put it down. What I think Sarah did so well with your hair is that she, the blonde highlights just land right on top of the purple and the blue. Yeah. Oh my God, it looks so pretty. Yeah. So it's uh, it's it's hyacinth colors. So hyacinth. there's teal, blue, and purple. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah, so so we're Sarah, going away next week, right? Yes, and so well, we're, yeah, we're gonna be gone. We're gonna be gone a lot. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, Sarah. So those are my favorite colors. Hyacinth is a colorway that we have in Adam and Eve mm-hmm. in Eden, and it's it's my Ravelry name. Um, so mm-hmm. if you want to find me on Ravelry, um, it's Hyacinth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so is her hair. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. And then I admired your hair earlier this week, oh, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So my sister. I went subtle. Mm-hmm. I also see Sarah. Yes. Mm-hmm. But she's got blue that starts way up here and goes all the way yeah, down. Yeah, little streaks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's well, we getting just had darker to, right? and darker. Absolutely. Yeah. Because we can. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. It's fun. You look fabulous. Oh, thank you. Mm-hmm. It matches your eyes, your eyeliner, too. And what are you wearing? Oh, I'm wearing Ixtapa because it's spring. Woo! Yeah, finally. <laughs> we we just passed the first day of spring. Yes. A little yes. while ago. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the weather's trying to get warm mm-hmm. here. It's having a hard time. Oh, by the so, time we air it, it'll be green outside mm-hmm. and there'll be flowers and... Right? So that's a really nice piece for summertime. Yeah. Because it's made out of linen. This Cynthia's is made out of Euroflax linen. And it's nice and cool. Yeah. I have one too. Yeah. We'll have to both wear them. One day. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, so let's talk about what's coming up. 
Sure. Um, it's going to be local yarn shop day on mm-hmm. April 27th, mm-hmm. and that's an important day for all local yarn shop owners. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We, we look forward to it. It's, it's kind of, um, it was coined by the National Needlework Association that we talk about a lot. They came up with this day as a way to uh, not just recognize local yarn shops, um, who, by the way, need a ton of support. Mm-hmm. You know, if it wasn't for all of you who shop at the local yarn shops, mm-hmm. there wouldn't be any. It takes a small village to run one of these shops mm-hmm. and lots and lots of support. So we thank you for that. And that's the other thing. It's to thank all of the people who shop at local yarn shops and uh, come to provide community mm-hmm. and engagement around a common um set of interests, whether that be knitting or crochet or spinning or weaving. Or dyeing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like and D-Y-E. Right. <laughs> so um, we're going to have some really special things happen on Local Yarn Shop Day. We don't have them all finalized yet, so we're not going to talk about them all. But our suppliers have come out with some really special products mm-hmm. that we're going to be having for that day. They're all exclusive um, any of them that are coming from our suppliers are not going to be sold in any other uh, store uh, or any other online store until the end of the year. Ah. So they're giving us exclusivity on wow. them. Wow. Okay. And we'll, yeah. the, so let's talk about the ones that would be available that we know online. About. Okay. Yeah. So that, you know, everyone watching can mm-hmm. get in on them too. We have a really pretty shoulder cozy coming from Handmaiden ah. out of their Wisp mohair yarn so is this going to be a kit Mm -hmm. okay so you can purchase a kit with the yarn and the pattern correct and there'll be like a special price on it that's right Mm -hmm. and uh the pattern's written by ruth gallo ah ruth is awesome and it's what was it called uh i want to say popover popover yeah yeah it's made with whisper which is did i say their mohair yarn yeah yeah Yeah. it's a really beautiful mohair and the Mm. entire uh piece um well, uh, the colorway they were getting is amazing, too. One of them, oh. it's, it's called Wine, and it's a real rich burgundy pink. Oh, nice. And the rest of the colors are going to be a surprise. I don't even know what we're getting. <laughs> but this piece has a really interesting stitch in it. It's called the cross stitch. Okay. And so strands of the mohair kind of cross over and leave a bit oh. of a, a hole. Right. So I think it's going to be really a pretty piece. Oh, I'm looking forward to seeing that. Yes. Yeah. And then uh, Blue Sky. Has, yeah. uh, has a fun thing, too. That's right. It's right here. Oh, did we bring it? Yeah. Oh. Okay. So from Blue Sky, they're giving their Sanborn sock pattern free to anyone who uh, would like to come in and get a little bit of wool stock or buy it on our online store. Mm-hmm. We're going to give you a promo code so that you can go and download this sock pattern. pattern. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Are the, this, these are great socks. Yeah. There's not a whole lot of worsted weight socks no, patterns out there. No, because I, and in the picture here, they're showing someone wearing them in Birkenstocks, mm-hmm. which you know, which which is good because Birkenstocks can be chilly. Um, but but also you can wear them. You know, it's really popular to wear socks like this when you're reading or oh, knitting. Yeah. You know, like they're or the even sleepy. Slouchy, yes, you know, going to bed in a nice <laughs> pair of warm wool socks. It's pretty nice. <laughs> Now, there's a whole other discussion about whether or not it's sexy to wear socks to bed, oh. but we won't get into that right now. <laughs> so these are the colors that are pictured on the pattern. That's why I brought these yeah. ones out, but there's a whole range of beautiful colors in uh, wool stock. This wool is really, really nice, it's too. Gorgeous. I'm just using it right now in my night shift. Yes. And I tell you, mm-hmm. the rows that I've got wool stock in, they're just delightful to Yes, me. yeah. And <clears throat> one of our customers is making one of those big bulky sweaters from Mary Maxim. You know, mm-hmm. the, the really big ones that right. you, you could put a design on it. Um, and she's she's using two strands of wool stock held together and the six millimeter needles that the pattern calls for. Mm-hmm. And it's it's gorgeous. So it, it doubles as a <clears throat> chunky. It doubles as, if you double it, it uh, fits a bulky gauge. Oh, bulky. Yeah, wow. yeah. Okay. Um, so know. it's a really plump and gorgeous yarn, but it doesn't feel plasticky or mm-hmm. you know scratchy in that bulky knit. Well, so. this is great. I love a, <coughs> a sock pattern, especially a worsted weight sock pattern. So if you mm-hmm. can come on in mm-hmm. or contact us, we'll give you this. And it's free. Pattern free mm-hmm. on mm-hmm. local yarn shop day. 
And um, check out Woolstock, too. They have lots of other really beautiful patterns. We've done the mm -hmm. Janesville jacket mm -hmm. yep. and the Trimont snood. Yes. Lots of, lots yep. of beautiful patterns. In Woolstock. Mm -hmm. Yep, you bet. What else is happening? Uh, well, we've got lots of uh, activities that we're going to be announcing when we get a little bit closer to the date. Okay. Um, and like. of course, we'll be we'll be coming in and out and traveling in the month of April. We've got a lot of mm -hmm. stuff going on then. Cynthia <coughs> and I are taking some professional development. We we're, are. We're going to Ann Bud's Knit for Fun retreat mm -hmm. in Freeport, Maine. Yes. Yeah. At the end of April. Yes. Beginning and of May. we're going to be taking classes with. Kate Atherley. I just went over my homework assignment. <laughs> Mary Jane Mucklestone. Mary Jane Mucklestone. And Isabel Kramer. Yes, uh -huh. Isabel. I'm yeah. looking forward to taking a class from her. Mm -hmm. I've, I've been lucky enough to have classes with Mary Jane yes. and Kate. Yes. Um, which yeah. were wonderful. Mm -hmm. But um, Isabel is new for me. Yes. Yeah. And we're going to Seattle um, in a couple, in a Oh, we're going to we're going to be coming back from Seattle when this airs. Yes, um, we're going to meet up with Rowan and see all their new yarns and for meet Martin's story. 2019, 2020. Mm -hmm. So we're very excited about yeah. that. We'll be able to give you some previews about what's coming. Yeah, and we actually get to sit down with their one of their designers, Martin Story, mm -hmm. and um, hear all about. The new yarns. We're even going to be able to taste some. I understand. Yeah, yeah. They told us they, they sent an email and said bring these needles mm -hmm. uh, because Martin Story's got a special pattern and we can knit along while he's talking. How and cool is it's that? It's really good. Yeah. So Cynthia and I are going to take some podcast, yeah, video footage, yeah, and, and interview Martin while we're there. Yep. As well as maybe Jan and Jan sure, and yeah, all the all the Rowan folks yeah. if we can. Yeah. And then uh, we're also going to TNNA in June. That's right. Yeah, the National Needle, the Cynthia's National coming Needle with me this year. Work Association. <laughs> yes, yeah. I'm strong arm me too. Yes. Too. <laughs> oh, well, I think you know. Eventually, we'll probably want to switch roles, right? And you <laughs> want to take over the buying. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure we'll want to do that. <laughs> But it's a it's a really good event. Um, it's a trade show for mm -hmm. for retailers, and you get to meet all the wholesalers and their classes. And there's another Rowan event happening there as well. Mm -hmm. So um, we're gonna have lots. We're of We're very excited about mm -hmm. that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah, if um, if anyone's going to be there, let us know, mm -hmm. and we'll try and meet up with you. That one's in Cleveland mm -hmm. in June. Yeah. Okay. Now. I was thinking, or at the end, Bud event too. Oh, in Freeport. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We'll You're take our camera there, there too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So tell me about the new yarns you've got coming in. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it's spring here mm -hmm. in Edmonton and Alberta and Canada, and um, every spring we look for just a few things to bring in that are new. Mm -hmm. I always look for a lace yarn because we seem to get a, a, an upsurge sure. in lace knitting. Mm -hmm. And so this year we've got a couple. We have two new yarns from Juniper Moon. That's a company that we really like a lot. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we have two new yarns from Louisa Harding. Right. And Louisa Harding is a really special designer, too. She's got a real um, kind of pretty feminine sort of mm -hmm. design mm -hmm. and the two yarns that we've chosen uh, are really special as well. Mm -hmm. Should I start with those two? Yeah, because they're right behind okay. us here. So yeah, yeah so that. the first one is uh, Lyrico and this is a ribbon yarn. It's a cotton blend. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I can't remember exactly the percentages, but I know it's got cotton. 50 cotton, 28 acrylic and 22 polyamide. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So quite a bit of nylon <clears throat> and acrylic in it too. Um, the the colors and I think that's mm -hmm. where the acrylic and the comes in. Um, they're dyed so pretty. They've got little tiny dots along the ribbon strand, mm -hmm. and um, we thought this is perfect yarn for summertime for little tops or yes. shawls or what what have you. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful, and I like the ribbon texture of it. That mm -hmm. makes it easy to knit. That's yeah. right. And this one. <clears throat> this one is Girandola. So it's a, a big wheel of color. There's a long color repeat in here. And I don't know about you, but I've been seeing pattern after pattern after pattern on Ravelry with mm -hmm. long color repeats lately. Yes. Yeah. And so we brought this one in and um, 
there's a really pretty pattern that we featured in our newsletter. Uh, if you don't get our newsletter, sign up for our newsletter because mm -hmm. we kind of give a lot of different pattern ideas and suggestions about what you might use with these new yarns mm -hmm. or yarns that are in your stash. You probably have some long color repeating yarn. Mm -hmm. So we give you lots of great pattern ideas. And how can someone sign up for our newsletter, Barb? <laughs> Are you asking? Mm -hmm. or, yeah. or is that a yeah. plug? Tell everybody. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, if you want to get our newsletter, just go to our website. And um, on our website, on the bottom of every page, there's a link. It's called the Yarn Bird. Mm -hmm. And you just click and sign up on it there. Yeah. We only send it out twice a month. So it's mm -hmm. not like it's going to be yeah. a lot of stuff in your inbox. You can always unsubscribe too, but... Yeah, nobody does, though. No. <laughs> so we've done a number of samples. Um, Hohi Locatelli came out with a pattern last month called Odyssey. And this was a pattern that she designed here on her trip to Canada. Right. It was inspired by her trip here to Canada. And we knit it up. And we used a ribbon yarn in the middle. It wasn't uh, Lyrico. We didn't have it quite in time. But we had another one from Lang that was very similar called Lang Lily. Right. And so this is the piece right behind us here, Cynthia, mm -hmm. that we knit up. And it's great. It's, it's a crescent-shaped shawl. And it gives you the opportunity to use three yarns. Again, it's a nice uh, stash buster. Mm -hmm. We used uh, Rowan Cotton. S summer Light? Nope. Uh, well, yes, we used Summer Light, but that was in the bottom. Okay. The top section, we used uh, their linen, their cotton linen yarn. Oh, yes. Yep. And um, we did the top in the cotton linen, then we did the ribbon, and on the bottom we used the Summer Light DK. Right. So this was a really nice way to showcase a ribbon, and um, we had lots of interest in that. We've got kits put together too. Great. And there's some right behind you. You can. <laughs> you want me you, to grab one? Well, you, if you can, if, if it's, <clears throat> you can show. Um, we can show some of the colors. These ribbons are so pretty because. Um, there, there you go. There's kind of a taupey color and a green that we had two sort of skeins of um, yarns that went with the ribbon. Right, um, right. So and these are two kind of worsted weight yarns. They are. Mm -hmm. This whole piece that Hoi did is DK worsted. Okay. So if you've got skeins at home that you're wondering, what, what do I do with? and you're in um, the area, come on in, mm -hmm. bring them with you, and we'll match them up with one of these ribbons. Right. And these kits are these kits are kind of hard to put online because we, we mixed and matched different colorways. But um, you can always call, mm -hmm. um, email, um, and we can do a little FaceTime, or we can do a little video and show mm -hmm. you, take some photos. And, or let um, us know, you know, what's your favorite colors? Do you like greens mm -hmm. or blues mm -hmm. or purples? And then we'll pull... We can custom pull one together. We have some talented folks here at our shop. <laughs> yes. Suzanne and Connie did these ones. And yes. And they just did an amazing job. And we do it all the time. Yeah. So, you know, we have lots of customers who just can't come into the store for one reason or the other. And they give us a call and we do some concierge shopping for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> so the other two yarns that we brought in are from Juniper Moon. Mm -hmm. And this one is... Um, perfect for lace. This is silk. Mm -hmm. This is yeah. pure mulberry silk and there are uh, 300 meters in a little um, skein like this mm -hmm. and they're perfect for summer shawls, uh, tops. Mm -hmm. In fact Juniper Moon has a whole line of patterning uh, for this yarn and when you uh, buy one we encourage you to look through the patterns and see if there's one that appeals to you. We're, we're gifting them complimentary with the yarn. Mm -hmm. This one, for example, is a beautiful shawl made with the silk. Mm -hmm. And um, and it's gorgeous. And they've, they've kind of got collections too. So this one is the Moroccan collection, which gives it sort of that air of, you know, yeah, culture and world travel. This one's Amelia. And this is uh, That's pretty. This is a knit top. With sort of a diamond lace pattern in mm -hmm. it. And There's this some one? crochet patterns too, yeah. right? Yeah, this one's a crocheted vest. Very pretty. Really pretty. There's something nice too about, you know, white in summertime. Mm -hmm. It looks so nice over top of navy oh, or and silk. Like it's, 
it's just so, and this is mulberry silk. So um, that means that the silkworms were fed mulberry leaves, and the the silk that ex, that's extruded is just so shiny and so, you know, white. So when they dye it, you get that, you know, beautiful sheen and that's right. saturation in the dye. It's I gorgeous. Knew that. I forgot all about it. Yeah, yeah. And people come in all the time asking, you know, do you have 100% silk? And, you know, we don't often have that. It's, right. It, you know, it, it tends to be a pricey, <laughs> a pricey yarn, um, but this one's priced really well. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing any weddings this year and you want to do something really special mm -hmm. for a wedding, 100% silk in a gorgeous, shiny color would be beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And these are seasonal yarns we bring in yarns generally for one or two seasons and when they're gone they're gone mm -hmm. so this is kind of the case with this one yep. the next one is a cotton um, we love cottons and this one is also from juniper moon it's called bud now this has been oh. a, around in their line a long time but it's new for us we've mm -hmm. had other cottons in the past that were similar to this yeah, this is kind of like that waffle weave. Yeah. That's what it reminds me of. If you were to knit it in stockinette stitch, you'd get that. So it's it basically, it's a really soft cotton with a binder cord that, that wraps Thread. it up and keeps it all together Yeah, um, to give you a really, really soft and plump uh, cotton. And same sort of thing with these. Um, Juniper Moon has gifted us a really nice pattern collection. Mm -hmm. And so we're passing that to you. If you want to knit a summer shawl or a top, have a look at some of the patterns that we've got. Mm -hmm. this, is, this isn't the silk, right? This is the this is bud. Right, yeah. right. It says down here mm -hmm. in the bottom. Let me check this yeah, one. This is bud as well. Top. Yep. Fun. So you don't have to, you know, spend hours searching for a pattern online. These uh, these come with the yarn. And isn't that gorgeous? It's really mm -hmm. pretty. Is that knit or crochet? I believe that's knit. That's knit. I see mm. the garter stitch bands in it. But this is done with bud as well. Mm -hmm. That's really that's really nice. We'll show you some. We'll, we'll, get, we'll put some links mm -hmm. uh, back to our website with these patterns. Here's a little crop top. Yeah, uh, great for yeah. layering. I love cotton too. Mm -hmm. This one's nice and chunky. It knits up on or, or crochets up on it probably a six millimeter needle. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be a fast project. And cotton's beautiful in the summertime. Nothing like it to yes. absorb moisture. Yeah. And Here's a crochet cool. cowl on a six millimeter hook. Mm -hmm. So that'll that'll be done up in no time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. And then uh, this is the swatch that you have of it. Yeah. And um, when you squish it up, oh Isn't my nice? goodness, it feels so amazing. This would make a really nice baby blanket. It really would. Yeah. Or a receiving blanket. And um, this is Church Mouse's Peacoat Edge right. um, pattern. Right. So this pattern, you can make little washcloths or, mm -hmm. you know, baby washcloths or um, entire blankets with this mm -hmm. pattern. So it's another right. great a suggestion or idea of what to do with a soft, soft cotton. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah. Oh, thanks. And again, you know, it's it's the time of year when people are looking for cottons too, mm -hmm. and quick, quick, because we're you know it's it's gardening, golfing, right? Summer vacation time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you want a project, you know, that's not going to be hot in your hands. Mm -hmm. So uh, come and have a look. We have lots more. <laughs> a cotton just not these two <laughs> but we have lots and lots of product in our shop so now's the time to pick that up for sure looking for it. now we also have some other um we also have some other special events coming up right yes yeah. we do were you thinking of sample it because that's where my mind was let's going. go to sample it for okay. sure yeah um, every month we, actually now, in, starting in, in April, twice a month, we're coming out with new yarns that we really like here in our shop. Mm -hmm. They're yarns that generally have been in the shop a long time, several uh, years, given us a lot of uh, pleasure in either knitting with them or creating garments and samples out of them. Mm -hmm. So this month we're putting on, uh, uh, say, it, well, uh, two two samplets. Two samplets. And we, we offer them at a reduced price in order mm -hmm. to encourage you to give them a shot. Right. Yeah. We give it we give a ten percent discount on them. And um the f I was thinking Barocco Ultra Wool, but that one's past that one will by be the done time. by the time this goes out. Yeah. Right. So we won't talk about that one yet. 
Okay. <laughs> but if you get our newsletter, mm-hmm. then you'll know about these yeah. when they happen. But this one is Adam and Eve. Mm-hmm. So Adam and Eve is kind of like one of our house brands mm-hmm. and a brand that we adore. Um, here's a few skeins of it right here. Yes. So Adam and Eve is our merino cashmere nylon blend, mm-hmm. and this one's in a plump fingering weight. So if you had a if you had a pattern that called for a sport weight, you could substitute with this one. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful yarn. Feels so soft, and amazing, and I these. Like- Colors are exclusive to us. Right. As well as the yarn. Yeah. We have about 30 colors. They're dyed for us by the dye artists at Handmaiden. Mm -hmm. And um, I like to say that this has the perfect amount of cashmere in it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not so much cashmere that it's going to pill or or be really, really soft. It's Mm -hmm. got a great twist to it, and it looks wonderful when you knit it up into projects. Right. Yeah, and they the skeins are just so plump Aren't as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So this will be ten percent off mm-hmm. from April fifteenth to April thirtieth. Right. Okay. Yeah. So we we used to do just one sample at a month, and mm-hmm. then you know customers started asking us like you know a month is a long time. Maybe you could do a couple of yarns a month. And well, so, I think we mm-hmm. found too that people forgot that it was right on sale, <laughs> so we'd have to send out reminders. Yeah. So this way, if we have a new one each. 15 days. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's something new to look forward to. And it's good good timing with our newsletter. Right. Because it, it's uh, nicely aligned with our newsletter. Right. Perfect. So what other events were you thinking of? Well, we have a, we have a trunk show. We have two right. trunk shows. Mm-hmm. One that will be, um, so both of them are by Brooklyn Tweed. Yeah. Um, and we're really excited to have uh, Brooklyn Tweed trunk shows here. Mm-hmm. So one will be um, ongoing from April 5th to the 21st. Right. And that's a trunk show based on uh, Piri. Right. And Piri is the uh, 100% merino wool. Um, from Brooklyn Tweed. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think we're going to have eight or nine garments in this trunk show. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a nice opportunity to see this yarn knit up into samples. Mm -hmm. So you can see what it looks like when it's knit in color work, for example, in a color work hat. Right. Or in a shawl in textured cables. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you get a chance, come on in and have a peek at that. Yes. We're also going to have a arbor trunk show yes in, that one's coming up in may mm-hmm. um and this one so the period the period trunk show will be a trunk show that's traveling from store to store to store mm-hmm. so before it comes to us it'll be at beehive in victoria mm-hmm. and then we'll send it off to the next uh, the next store mm-hmm. um but this one right. is going to be just for us just for us we worked with the folks at brooklyn tweed to uh pick a collection of garments that we felt would really represent this yarn. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to have some really nice pieces Mm -hmm. that both Cynthia and I kind of hand-picked. Yes. We wanted to, you know, have a nice assortment. So when these come in, um, we'll let you know, and you can come on into the store and have a peek at them. Yeah. Try them on. Yeah. We'll do do some in-store events. Maybe we'll bring out the video camera and sort of capture that for everyone. Or we, we could have a Twitter feed on it. (laughs) <laughs> sure. <laughs> but that's that's one of the things about a trunk show that's really important because, you know, people often say to me, you know, I love the photography in these patterns, mm-hmm. but when I go to knit the garment, it, the, the photography doesn't really show me what I need to know. Right. I don't get that 360 view. I don't get to see what it looks like on a, you know, on a real body as opposed to a model body. Right. And so uh, when the trunk show comes in, we'll take some videos and we'll, we'll maybe get the garments on real people, mm-hmm. do a 360 and show you what they actually look like up close and personal. Yeah. That's really good. No, you have a sample, um, the Harlow hat. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this isn't my sample. This is Andrew's. This is Andrew's sample. Yeah. But this hat is knit out of Loft, which is another yarn that we have. We brought mm-hmm. in. It's done in brioche stitch. Uh, it, this one was knit by Andrew, who works at our shop, and he says that this hat pattern is the perfect hat for beginners. Ah. So if you want to start brioche, mm-hmm. this is probably a great project to use. We're, we've set a challenge out, I think, to everybody in our shop <laughs> to knit one of these. And Piri, I think, would be a really nice yarn to knit this out of as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we've got a few people that are working on this right now, uh, some of our customers, too, just came in last week and picked up two skeins of right. Piri. That's all you need. In fact, I think we had enough left over in Loft that you could do a second hat. 
Oh, that'd be nice. Yeah. Is it reversible? It's totally reversible. Isn't that cool? Yeah. So you could have the darker color show out if you wanted to. Yeah. Which side do you like better? Well, I would probably pick different colors than Andrew did. Would you? I'd probably go with purple and blue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I, you know what? It's hard to say. I, I love think they're these both. Colors. They're both really nice. Mm -hmm. That's the beauty of brioche, eh? It is. You know, it's it's a two color brioche. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then you get that really squishy, lofty feeling in it mm -hmm. too. That's nice and warm. That's really nice. Andrew did a great job. He did. Yeah. And he said to me too. You know, it was really uh, interesting when he washed it to see how the yarn plumped up on this. Ah, yes. Yeah. Washing makes all the difference, it doesn't really it? Does. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, so we have a couple of other samples too, Cynthia. Our mm -hmm. sample knitters have been really busy. Mm -hmm. Do you want to show people um, the one from Caroline? Yes. Uh, we That's Caroline lent us one of her garments. And this is from Stephen West. It's called Elliot. Mm -hmm. And it's a beautiful shawl. She did it out of three different colors of Lascaux. Yes. We'll take some close-up photos and put them in here so mm -hmm. you can see this up close. Yeah. But um, Andrew's been wearing this all week long, too. <laughs> it looks so great on him. It's, a, it's an in-between season kind of thing, right, in yeah. the store here. It's, it can be cold. It can be warm. You just never quite know what the weather's going to be like and how the air conditioning slash heater is going to react to that. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I've been cozy all morning long in this one. Yeah, so what are you wearing? This is Night Shift by Andrea Mowry, mm -hmm. and we've just been smitten lately by her patterns. Um, she has Night Shift, which is this one, a, a large triangle shawl done in worsted weight, and so Pat knit this up out of two colorways of Curion. Noro Curion, mm -hmm. yes, yeah. And so she just, you know, she went through the pattern. It, Andrea has you do it in a whole bunch of different colors. Right. And this is another great stash buster. I'm doing another one mm -hmm. in my own stash and just using different colors that I've got at home. Right. So it's a kind of a worsted weight mm -hmm. that you're looking for. Yeah. yeah. I'll show you. Yeah. Too. So this is why it's still in progress on the needles, but it's coming up. Um, this is the one that she does out of spin cycle yarns in her yeah, pattern. Yes, yeah. yeah. So I had a customer come in this week asking me, you know, do we have spinning classes and how much would it cost to get a wheel? Because she was thinking that she would spin her own yarns to do something like this. But that's a really good idea, you know, to go stash diving. Yes. Because, you, you know, everybody's got that 20 gram ball of worsted weight hanging out in their stash. And this is a great pattern for mixing and blending. You're right. Mm -hmm. So I've used in here Epic wow. Yarn. I've used Julie Aslan Nurtured, Nurtured right. which is what this is. I even took some cashmere that was finer and held two strands together Wow. to make a little heavier weight. Wow. So that's in here. Wouldn't you love to see Barb's stash <laughs> when she's got a little ball of cashmere that she can throw in there? You know, I cleaned out my stash. Yes. I did some organizing at home, mm -hmm. and um, it was so much fun. I gave away all sorts of <laughs> lovely yarn. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but this pattern, you guys, is so much fun to make. It's slip stitches. Mm -hmm. You need to go get it and try it out. Right. So no color. It, it looks like, you know, it might look like complicated color work, but it's not. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. It's super easy to do. And once you've got the um, a few rows done, you've got the pattern pretty much memorized. Mm -hmm. And um, it's so much fun. So there's this one, which is the worsted weight triangle. And then she's got a smaller cowl that's done out of um, sport weight yarn. Okay. And she calls that one shift. The shift. Yeah. Okay. So we've got kits for both of these that we pulled together because um, they're so much fun. And we'll we've, show you some pictures because mm -hmm. one of our customers um, came in with four samples four, yeah. that she'd done up of shift. And that's lovely. And she did them. We found what we thought was a good substitute for mm -hmm. spin cycle because it's a little hard to get being that it's hand spun. They just don't have the supply sure. that yeah. you would. So we found yarn from Lang called Milton, which is a cotton blend, uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it looks like hand spun. Right. People Beautiful. are also using Zauber Ball. Oh yes, yeah. And um, we have a few others too. Yeah. Lang Tosca is another one. Right. Zauber Ball is by um, Shopovola. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's All you need mm -hmm. is a yarn that has a really nice long 
gradient. gradient. In mm-hmm. fact, um, girandola might work too. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, find something that you've got that's got a really nice long colorway mm-hmm. and then find some complementary or contrasting colors to go with it and you're set. You're making a lot of progress on this. Yeah. Because I think you brought this last time and it was just a little tiny yeah. triangle. Yeah. Yeah. Good oh, for it's you. super easy to work with. Lots of hockey games in Barb's life. Yes. <laughs> I wish I could say go Oilers go, but uh, they're pretty yeah, much gone. That's okay. Yeah. Who are you cheering for now? Uh, hmm. Hmm. She's got to think about that I one. I do. That's all right. We've got a flash mob coming up as well. Mm -hmm. So on April 20th, we'll have our new colorway, and it's inspired by Taurus, the bull. Right. And it's going to be a really cool combination of yarn. So we've got Handmaiden in Nova Scotia working on that one for Mm -hmm. us. Guys, this is going to be so exciting. (laughs) Up until now, we've had kind of single skeins or or multis where Mm -hmm. we've had two skeins. Uh, of well, the, fingering weight merino. Right. The last multi was really just a mini skein that came with it. Right. But this the one. The first one, though, remember mm-hmm. Kim from Flash, from Flock Fiber? Flock Fiber. She came up with two colorways for us. Oh, that right. One was You're okay. right. You're right. Yeah. I wish we could say we still have them, but they're, they're totally gone. Yep. Yep. They've so. just flown out of here and. Good, good on it, you know, never yep. to be seen again. <laughs> kind of a one-time sort of fun event. Well, I suppose if something was really popular and people demanded it, mm-hmm. we could probably look at bringing in another order. Right. But the idea behind this is to contract with, um, you know, like with, with flock fiber and with sugar tots. These are small indie dyers, mm-hmm. and we, we put a big order in for them, mm-hmm. right? We're ordering like 50 to 100 skeins. Mm-hmm. And they're, so they're dying, they're dying and dying and dying. And we bring it in and we, you know, promote that particular brand yeah. and that color. And then when it's gone, it's gone. But yeah, if something was very, very popular, I'm sure that mm-hmm. Kim or um, um, Caroline yeah. or Christy or, yes. uh, and, and even um, the ladies at Handmaiden. The, uh, the thing about this collection, though, is that it's so fun. These dyers are picking the zodiac signs that mean something to them. Right. So last month, Caroline's was all about her because she's right. an Aries mm-hmm. and she picked a beautiful fiery shade. Yes. And um, this one coming up, uh, Jana has done something really special. Right. So we did some investigation into Taurus and what colors are representative of Taurus. It was actually kind of surprising because mm-hmm. you think Taurus, a bull, right? Mm-hmm. You know, and it's going to be some sort of like deep, dark, dark or, color. Mm-hmm. But it's not. It's actually inspired a lot by Venus. And so the colorway is pink and green. And it's um, it's more about love than it is about aggressive um, bull tendencies. Um, and so, uh, so that was a challenge for Handmaiden. They had to do a couple of dyes mm-hmm. to, to kind of get the right tone on it. So they've paired two yarns together. Yes. Yeah. So they're offering up their Blueface Lester base mm-hmm. along with Zambezi. Right, which is mohair and mm-hmm. silk. Yeah. So everybody's going to get two skeins, not just one, mm-hmm. that you can pair together. And do you remember the meterage? I don't. I don't. But we'll we'll open we'll open the box in a little bit, mm-hmm. and we'll we'll go over all the details with everybody. Um, but I, I'm really excited about this pairing because mm-hmm. I I think it would be so much fun to do. There's lots of inspiration out there right now with people using designers using two yarns to do striping kind of features. Mm-hmm. So you can you can create a shawl where like I'm sort of thinking even about the over the over the Willamette, which I, apparently we're mispronouncing, but that, you know, that crocheted shawl, I'm doing the inset panels instead of doing them in another color, doing them in the mohair. Oh, beautiful. I think that would be really lovely. Well, look at our hot shawl. Right, yeah. Right? yeah. You need to redo that one and do yeah. that feather and fan pattern in that mohair. Right, and then and then finish it off with a little bit of the mm-hmm. blue face luster. So I think there's there's lots of designs. I mean, you can do this in sweaters, you can do it in scarves, you can go simple, you can go complicated, but it's pairing up those two yarns that mm-hmm. have the same color in a, in a sense. I mean, they're going to take the color differently, um, but they're, they're paired together on purpose mm-hmm. and um, doing up something that's really 
really um, inspired by Venus. I think that's just and really cool. Even though it's summer, it's probably not too late to do mittens. No. We have some yeah. perfect mitten patterns. Absolutely. Where you can put those two yarns together. So I'm really excited <laughs> yeah. about this one. Yeah, like our heavenly mittens pattern would be really nice or the shinny mittens pattern would be really nice. And it's funny that you say that because um, people sometimes ask me about getting into the thrummed mitten class, you know, because it's always full. Mm -hmm. And I say, we run it all year long. You can do thrummed mittens in July mm -hmm. because uh, you just put them away for the winter time and you'll get so many requests that you might as well start making them now. Right. Because by September and October when it gets cold, people are going to be saying, hey, where's my thrum mittens? Yeah. Where are my shinny mittens? Where are my heavenly mittens? Yeah. yeah. They're popular. Or hats too. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so that's okay. going to be coming up for Flash Mob. Yeah, April 20th. 6 p.m. We put that out um, and it's available on our online store first and then uh, the next day uh, people can come into the shop and purchase it mm -hmm. as well. If there's any left over. Mm -hmm. And I just want to say too that there's another good reason to sign up for our newsletter because we send out a special notice right. for Flash Mob to everybody that's on our newsletter subscription list. Right. As a reminder. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to talk about um, finished objects. Right. So I just have a couple of things to show. Okay, great. Um, one is that I finished the little oh. Ipana sweater. Yeah. Um, so this is um, Hat Trick. Um, River City Yarns hat trick and yeah. some and a little gradient kit that I had. But so soft, you guys. Yeah. This yarn's beautiful. It was. And the sad story about this is that I didn't do a gauge swatch and I used the wrong needles. And so it, <laughs> I put it on them just to see if it fit. And like the buttons kind of go like this a little bit. Oh, really? So it's too small. It's too small. So I'm doing another one. I have enough, I have enough yarn left over that I can do another one. So I'm this doing one's it right. for sale. Does anybody want this one? <laughs> this is a store sample. <laughs> because I'm so impressed with how, um, hat trick knit up. Yeah. I just love knitting with it. And it's such a beautiful pattern. So this is Ipana. And um, I'll put a link to it in the show notes. It's it's a really nice, nicely written Some, pattern. I read somewhere on one of our um, comments that somebody else asked their little one what color he wanted. And yes. He said orange too. Yes. So. Yes. So yeah, this is, uh, I think that, and I think the grays, just the, the mm -hmm. grays in this uh, gradient kit just went really well with that orange. So perfect I color am, for a three or four year old boy. Yeah. I am working on another one. And then I finished Ooh. my, um, uh, my saltwater mitten. So this is wow. the, um, this is the Fogo Island pattern. And this is done in Rowan Valley tweed. And again, um, I really enjoyed working with this, uh, with this yarn, it's a it's a lot of fun mm -hmm. to work with, and the the color work really snaps in this one. Boy, yeah. that feels so nice too. Yeah, look at all this. What's this called? Uh, salt Lights? and pepper. Oh, salt and pepper. Yeah, salt and pepper. Yeah, and then this is the Fogo Island Nine patch. That's there. So beautiful. This is from the book Saltwater Mittens. Um, I am doing another pair with um, with Barocco Ultra Wool mm -hmm. because it's a machine washable wool, and then um, I really like this. So I started another. Um, I started a swatch this time, and this is with Rowan Valley Tweed as well. And this is for a little vest. Um, it's a vest pattern written by Jessie McKitchick. She's an oh. Edmonton designer. Yeah. It's called Windsor Vest, and it's a kid's vest done in Fair Isle, and it's steaked. Oh, cool. So it's a really nice steaking project um, for for first-time steakers because you're just steaking the armholes and the neckline. Everything else um, you don't have to do. It's not like a right up the front kind of thing. So you've just knit a small little swatch. Well, I, yeah. Pull apart? You know, I knit the swatch because it, you need five colors mm -hmm. and I wanted to make sure that the colors would pop. Mm -hmm. You know, we were talking about that last time mm -hmm. where you lay the colors out and you think they're going to go. And I started off with colors that were very similar to the ones that she used in her pattern. Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't like the way that they, that they went. So I just kept playing and playing and right. playing with it. And I finally decided that I think this is what I'm going to go with. Yeah, the this, one on the top. This one on the top. Um, and, you know, again, you have to, you, you need to do a swatch. You need to hold it away from yourself mm -hmm. to actually see the colors because up close they don't always work and in different lights they don't work. Yeah. So this is, um, this is my swatch I done in the round. You. Mm -hmm. Because again, if you're going to do a, if you're going to do a sweater in the round, you need to do a swatch in the round. Um, and I measured across. Yeah. That's so cool. So yeah, it, it really makes a difference even just in the, um, in the red, you know, this is red mm -hmm. with gray and this is red with white. So just trying to decide which 
combinations yeah. you're going to go with. So yeah, so Jesse's pattern, is that available on Ravelry? It is. And yeah. it's called? Windsor. Windsor. Yeah. And uh, so yeah, if you want to make your little person look like... Um, like one of the uh, princes in waiting, mm -hmm. uh, this is the pattern for you. And if you want to try sticking, it's really good. So again, I'm using Rowan Valley Tweed in this. Mm -hmm. And um, so now that I've got my swatch done and my colors picked out, I can cast on and make sure I'm using the right needles and all is good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Yeah. And then um, I've got a couple of works in progress. Sure. Let's have, let's have a look at those too. Yeah. So... Um, we have a new design coming out from Kate Atherley. Um, she designed our gridiron, um, gridiron socks. And so she's done a gridiron hat and mittens. And so I'm working on my test knit of it. So this is, um, this is the gridiron design in Saskatchewan colors, mm. um, but in touchdown, uh, River City Yarns touchdown. Nice. And I'm really having a lot of fun with that. Yeah. So I'm, I've it's got so some... neat how this pattern comes out, you guys. Yes. With these little grids. Well, and the cool thing about this is that it's done back and forth. So you're slipping stitches on the purl side. And you might think that that would be really tricky to do, and it's not. So um, when this pattern comes out a little bit later this uh, summer, um, I'll have some good advice for everyone who's doing it. Mm -hmm. Nice. And you're using your yarn it. Yeah, yeah. It's so much fun. Yeah. And um, this one, um, not this one, but another one that I'm working on. Oh, the Ipana sweater. Um, because you need to count stitches in it, mm -hmm. um, I've been using my uh, Coco Knits Oh, um, okay. Well, we've got to talk bracelet. about that. Yeah, let's, let's do that. We um, are kind of big fans of Coco Knits. Mm -hmm. we kind of For got, good reason. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're a company that really does some thoughtful design when it comes to makers. Not just knitters and crocheters, but people who sew and mm -hmm. um, weave and spin. And uh, so we've got um, this this little project here. This is a new kit that we got in. Yeah, this is a notions case. Yeah, and it's made out of washable paper. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? I know. So it has all these little sections too, so you can put stuff in here. I've got in here my. Uh, double pointed needles for a pair of socks, my chibi, mm -hmm. um, a repair tool. Mm -hmm. You just tuck that, tuck that top back mm -hmm. in like an envelope. Yeah. yeah. And these can, uh, you can travel with them all, or you can just take one and put this in your project bag. Mm -hmm. I love that about it. Mm -hmm. and, and so they, all, they, uh, little all the things. little sections will snap in and out of the case. Mm -hmm. Here I've got my pencil and my little River City Yarns markers. Mm -hmm. Love these. Highlighters. These are super for patterns and things. Yes. Yeah. So it's something where you can store all sorts of little things and then you just roll it up. Open this one for me. What's in there? Oh, I think that was my stitch markers. Yes. <gasps> yeah. Yes. So watch this. I think this is really cool. Oh, so yeah. You want, so some, how... you want some stitch markers? <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. Isn't that great? So Cynthia is wearing the Maker's Keep, which is mm -hmm. a little magnetic uh, square. It's like an Apple Watch, sort of. You yes. wear it on your wrist. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you can hold all sorts of things. Coco Knits is really innovative in that. Um, their tools, they're, like their cable needles, have a metal section in the middle mm -hmm. so they can clip on. Mm -hmm. They've got a row counter that magnetically attaches to the watch. Yes. And if you <laughs> if you have a little metal tin, yeah. you can just stick it right on there. Yeah. But I think it's so great for stitch markers because as I was doing my Ipana cardigan, when yes. I every every 20 stitches I'd put in a marker just so I could do my count right. and watch TV. Um, and so you just can take a marker off your off your maker's keep. And this is made out of one of those um, you know, one of those straps that you can just I'm not going to do it right, yeah. but you, you can just snap it right on. Right. It also snaps very securely onto the handle of your bag, so you can just keep it with you everywhere mm -hmm. you go. I use mine just to pull all my stitch markers out of my cushions in my Chesterfield. <laughs> just run it down along there. It just sucks everything up, <laughs> including a few quarters and dimes. Are they, do they actually have real metal in them? <laughs> I, don't know. I just made that up. So this is washable paper, which yeah. means that you can put this through your washing machine on I gentle know. cycle, and then um, you let it dry. and And they say you can like scrunch it up and mm -hmm. fold it, and and the the fabric, the paper fabric, gets softer and yes. more like leather with each with each um, with each scrunch that you do. 
And they come with different cords, too. I put the blue one in there, Mm -hmm. um, but they come with a blue cord and an orange cord, and and then you just kind of pop it up. And it's all ready to go. Isn't that? That's just I know, so cool. Very nifty. Yeah. So we have those. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, tell everybody about this. Yeah. So this is a linen bag. Um, here, let me hold that for you. I, I brought two of the boxes out. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is a this is a, a reusable bag. Um, that, Perfect for shopping. Who yes. doesn't love? And with summer markets coming up this year, we thought these would be great. Mm-hmm. You know, you can carry. Uh, Anything that you bring home from the market, you can use it for a knitting project, you can hang off the back of your chair. Mm-hmm. Read our newsletter about this because the uh, founder of this company, Julie Weisenberger, mm-hmm. talks a lot about her design with this. Mm-hmm. Um, this is one of her favorite designs for knitting. And so we've the, got them available in yep. large and medium. The handles are mm-hmm. come separately. Mm-hmm. So yeah. you, go, you order those separately. They're right here. We've got yep. them right here. Yeah. And so you can put them on, you can put them, you can put these handles on other things. If you wanted to do a felted bag or something mm-hmm. else, you can obviously get these handles for other projects, but we've got them on the bag here. And there's instructions in here too, to make your own. So if you want to make your own uh, bag. Oh, the instructions yeah. are, in are with the handles? Yeah, in with oh, the handles. Isn't that cool? Isn't that great? Yeah. But if you don't have time and you just want to pick up something that's really rustic and if you don't um, sew, like Cynthia. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and there's something about linen, right? Mm-hmm. It's so nice. Well, it's hardy and durable, mm-hmm. and you can embroider on it, um, so you can do some fun things with it. Then we have something very practical, mm-hmm. too. For Thank those you. of you who are knitting sweaters, this is amazing. Yeah. So this is, open the box here. They call this is a leather cord and needle stitch holder kit. And right. there we go. So you get this leather cord. Mm-hmm. Here, you take the one that's okay. already done up. You get a leather cord and a needle. And you screw the leather cord into the base of the needle. So, so you just needle pop it hollow. Yeah. You just pop it in here and you screw it on. And once it's on, you can use it yeah. to to put stitches on. So when you're doing a sweater, sometimes you have to put your stitches on hold or the arms, and this is a great way to do it. You can use yarn, a lot of people do, but when you're trying to um, knit off of it, it can be hard with yarn. Whereas with this little leather cord, your stitches sit really nicely on this cord, and you can use this end just to knit them right off. Mm-hmm. And well, you to to put them on, and then on. you can knit off that needle end, right? With so, your with so your you other needle, slide your stitches onto here and knit them off. Mm-hmm. Or I imagine you could even knit with this if. But you could probably put the other needle on the other end, right? And then knit them off if, if you had to go from the other direction. Came to shove. Sheila Sheila told me that she used the Addy. Um, she used the little Addy rubber grips right. to get it, get it in there. So yeah. my my hands are yeah. moist and slippery from drinking coffee all morning. So yeah, I, but I this comes with it. three cords. Mm-hmm. You get one really long one for your body, like for sweaters. And, yeah. yeah, and two shorter ones for sleeves. So and then very cool tools. Yeah, very cool. What else do we have? Is there something mm-hmm. there's something else in the box I there, know. isn't there? I, I thought of it and now it's gone. Okay. Well, there's lots of cool tools. Um, my favorite, of course, is the Maker's Keep. And then everything comes in these beautiful craft boxes. So never throw these boxes away. They're just the most, they've, they're just done so nicely and yes. they're sturdy. You could wrap that up and put another gift in it if you wanted to. Yeah. Okay. I know what I was thinking about was the whole, uh, when you mentioned Addy, we talked in our last newsletter about Addie. Oh, yes. And, um, and crochet in particular. Right. Mm-hmm. So, you know, um, we've gotten a lot of requests lately for uh, crochet, mm-hmm. whether it be Tunisian or plain crochet. We have a lot of people coming in looking for Tunisian crochet needles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because they're, um, they're special crochet needles. They're, they need to be very long. And um, so the way that most, most companies are... Um, Responding to this need is to give you a crochet hook with a cord that you can add on to mm-hmm. it. Um, and that cord, then, if you can, if you have an interchangeable set, you can change the length of the cord. And that's much easier, in my opinion, than trying to knit off a long, rigid hook. Right. Mm-hmm. So I brought in my Addy crochet 
hook set to show right. everybody. So this, uh, Addy, as you probably know, has interchangeable knitting needle sets, all sorts of them. Short tips and long tips and bamboo and mixed sets. Mm -hmm. And they offer this set as an add-on to your Addy set. So this contains, I believe, eight uh, tips. Some are metal, some of the bigger ones are plastic. And you can fit these right onto your Addy cords. And that's the nice thing I love about Addy is that their cord sets are all interchangeable mm -hmm. between one another, yeah. including the crochet. Well, well, the other thing I really like about this crochet hook set is that even if you don't put the cords on, the oh, hooks yeah. themselves are long enough to use. For I your love that regular too. crochet. Yeah, yeah. There's no um, some of them. Some of the interchangeable sets, the hooks tend to be a little too small, mm -hmm. particularly on the big sizes. And if you want to put a lot of loops onto your crochet mm -hmm. hook, that's hard to do with a small yeah. one. Yeah. So these are really nice. You can use them like this, or you can pair them up with uh, the cords. And then the heart stoppers are another great thing right. that people want to buy with these sets. Right. And uh, these are hollow, mm -hmm. so they're really nice and light, and they warm up in your hands really quickly as mm -hmm. well. Yeah. Well, yeah. the plastic ones aren't hollow, but the metal ones are. Mm -hmm. So I keep um, my cords for my Addies in my Offhand Designs kit. Mm, look at this. Yeah. yeah. You talk about the cords. Okay. I'll show off your... So these are great to swap back and forth between... And, you know, Addies one of the only companies out there that has this click system. When you're using Addies, you never have to worry about your needles coming unscrewed. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't happen because <laughs> this technology has you take one of your tips, put it in here, and you uh, turn it till it till you find the groove, and then mm -hmm. you push and turn, and it's locked on there, really, really tight, mm -hmm. really nice smooth connection as well. So I love that about them. Yes, that they don't come undone. Yeah. I think that's, I, I do too. And I just love the nickel plating on them. Mm -hmm. I was using um, another brand with the screw-in ones uh, because I just happened to have the size that I needed and mm -hmm. it was quick and accessible, but it doesn't have the nickel plating on it. I know. So in addition to getting unscrewed, it just doesn't quite slide through the stitches as yeah. nicely. Mm -hmm. They call it turbo for a reason. Right? <laughs> they do. They do. I love these cases too, Cynthia. Yeah. I have two sets of mm -hmm. Addies in here, plus mm -hmm. a whole bunch of, you know, extra bamboo. see that. Yeah, so this is so, uh, by Offhand Designs from yeah. the U.S. and all their um, all their needle cases are made with upholstery fabrics. They they can stand a lifetime of oh. in and out. Um, and well, they, honestly, this, I've had this for like probably five six mm -hmm. years. See, I carry all my short tips I see in that. here. Yeah, I don't think we have any of these in stock though. Really? Really? Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Well. So. We'll have to look for them when we go to TNNA. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's really nice. All right. So that's that was uh, mm -hmm. something that we wanted to talk about too. And now, how about these books? Yes. Let's chat about these yes. books. So we had we had mentioned that it would be kind of nice to. You, I mentioned that we could embroider on the linen bag. Right. And that got us thinking about this book called uh, Make and Mend. Mm -hmm. So this has a lot of ideas on how to mend. Um, Right. How to make things, but also how to mend them. And I like this um, picture on the back. It's got a it's got a hole in a pair of jeans, but it's all embroidered around mm -hmm. it, so it makes it look really nice. I and there's a lot of information here on shashiko, which is a Japanese um, way of mending. Mm. And so we we're really excited about this. I think there's a few of us at the shop here who want to um, do some projects together yeah we want to do a you know like a, a night where we get together and mm, embroider some, and yeah. try and do this yeah that'd be fun mm -hmm. yeah so that you're right the bag would be a great place wouldn't that be nice mm -hmm. yeah um or any you know any little we have those um those little bags that we used in the advent box to hold projects yes. it'd be really fun to do some embroidery on those and you know it doesn't have to be anything big just no just a couple of flowers maybe some daisies and then you've got a really cute little gift bag i think i would do something geometric oh yeah you know? why not uh, there's some great patterns in here mm -hmm. and i love the whole idea too about not throwing things away. Yeah. Recycling. My husband has a whole bunch of jeans that he just kind of 
outgrew. Mm-hmm. He actually lost some weight. <laughs> and um, so he's got these beautiful genes that I think have to be taken apart and right. remade into something. Sure. Well, you could make you could make a linen, you could make a I cotton could, bag like that. I could yeah. make a linen bag with sure. a pattern. Yeah. That's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. And then this is also a really good book for um, those who, I mean, there are projects in here, but if you just wanted to do some squares with your with your yarns, mm-hmm. um, Nikki Epstein has some one. So this is a, bo- a book of 150 squares that you can knit. Mm-hmm. And it's a really good primer. If you're a new knitter, you can start at the beginning of the book and work your way to the back. Mm-hmm. And by the time you get to the to the back, you'll have done pretty much every stitch known to man. Um, and you'll do, or woman. have done color work, and you'll have done cables, mm-hmm. and you'll have done lace. Right. We spent two years teaching classes mm-hmm. using this, this book. book. Yeah. So it's not a new book. No. It's just a very valuable book, mm-hmm. and one that Barb has to keep reordering. And we just yeah. reordered this mm-hmm. one. So if yeah. you're looking for a really good reference book, this is it. Right. Check it out, and yeah. we'll send you one. And then there are um, lots of projects in here. Uh, you can do sweaters. You can do afghans. You can do a handbag. You can do a vest. Mm-hmm. There's, uh, Using putting squares, squares together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then in the back, there are some one-square stuffed toys that you can do as well. So, yeah. um, so this is a really good, uh, really good uh, book for your library. Mm-hmm. And it's not available as an ebook, and it shouldn't be. <laughs> yeah. She's no, this got is some... one that you, you want to definitely have a flip through. Yes. Page by page. Yes. All color photographs. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. really nice. Okay. Cynthia, I think we're done. What? I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good because we probably uh, yacked everybody's ears off for yes. more than our allotted time anyway. Mm-hmm. Okay. So do we have any prizes this week? We up? do. We always have prizes. So mm-hmm. leave comments. Um, this month, maybe tell us what your favorite social media um, platform. outlet platform is. Um, leave a comment in the show notes below. Sign up for our newsletter to get some more information mm-hmm. from us because we can't put everything in the podcast. Sign up for our podcast too. You can subscribe, subscribe. for this one, right? Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. If you if you haven't already subscribed to our YouTube channel, then do it. Yeah, because mm-hmm. uh, because we'd love to see we'd love to see that number go up. Right? Yes, and know how many people we're reaching. Mm-hmm. Um, somebody also asked me about how to leave a comment. So if you're watching this on a tablet or an iPad, um, there's a little arrow, just a little kind of triangular arrow pointing down next to the word comments. You click on that, and it'll allow you to leave a comment. So mm-hmm. do that. We pick from we pick three people each month from the people who've left a comment, um, and we we give out prizes, and they're always fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, all right. So have a great month, everybody. We'll see you in another 30 days here on YouTube and um, in between every couple of weeks with our newsletter. Mm -hmm. And you can always send us an email. And if you're visiting, make sure you come by our shop. If you come to Edmonton this summer for holidays or for camping or come and see us. Do Send an an email to info at rivercityyarns.com and let us know Mm -hmm. you're coming. And then we'll make sure to give you a great welcome. All right. Happy summer, spring, everybody. <laughs> Bye. Hi, Cynthia. Hey, look what just came in. A big, huge box from Fleece Artist Handmaiden. I'm going to open this up right now, see what's inside it. I'm hoping that this is Taurus, our flash mob, for April. <gasps> it is. Oh, my God. Oh, oh my gosh, check this out. Isn't this beautiful? Okay, I'm going to show this to you. These are little pairings, they're called. I'm going to show them to you up close. So this is two different kinds of yarn. Inside here is a skein of Zambezi and a skein of their Blue Face Lester. And You can hold these two skeins together and do mittens or hats. Uh, You can knit them separately. You could use one or two for a shawl and do stripes. You could use the Zabizi by itself and then you could put them together. There's all sorts of options. Uh, You can use three or four and make a sweater. So there's so many things. Anyways, I just wanted to share this with you and let you know that this is going to be out on April 20th at 6 p.m. 
Uh, hope you guys get some of this. <laughs>